Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson and I'm the director of Stevenson Dental Solutions in San Dimas, California. I'm also an emeritus professor of clinical dentistry at UCLA and I have a private practice in West Los Angeles. And today we're going to tackle the class 3 composite restoration in the previous video where we did the preparation on tooth number 9 DL. So let's start by inserting the plastic mylar strip which is about 50 microns thick. This is thicker than a metal matrix band. So sometimes you need to just create a little bit of separation by tweaking an instrument between the teeth and allowing the strip to seat all the way through the contact down to the gingival crest. And because this matrix strip is rather thick, being 50 microns, if you are not going to place a wedge, you may end up having a problem with reestablishing a contact. So I'm going to go ahead and use a Garrison Soft Wedge. This is the extra small size. You can use a wooden wedge of a different style if you like. And just insert this between the teeth to compensate for the thickness of that band. It should be secure and it shouldn't pull out easily. In other words, the wedge has to trap the band against the tooth. We're going to be wrapping the plastic mylar matrix strip across the facial and then across the lingual to establish the bulk of the contours. There are many ways of doing this, but I like this particular method for this particular uh, examination. I'm just going to use adhesive. There's no need to etch. There's no need to use any primer. This is just a straight adhesive made by Kerr called Optibon FL. You could use a universal adhesive or whatever adhesive you, you have available. Now, it's important not to like here this. We want this to be soft. So when we insert the composite, and this time I'm using Filtex Supreme Ultra A2 body, not the enamel, not the dentin, it, it creates sort of this snowplow effect. In other words, when you inject the composite, it squishes the adhesive out of the preparation and it allows better adaptation of the composite. And then we're going to manipulate the contours before we like here with an IPC. And if the uh, composite is sticking to the instrument, you can always use a product called Modeling Resin by Bisco. Other companies make a similar product. And what these do is they, they allow the instrument to manipulate the composite without sticking to the composite. And they don't in any way diminish the hardness or the quality of the composite surface. And look how well this composite will flow into the plastic matrix area by utilizing the technique of a snowplow where you're injecting and allowing the adhesive to flow out rather than pre-curing the adhesive. Uh, it's a magical uh, thing to see. And you can see how incredible this is. Now, of course, there's lots of flash to clean up but that is uh, not a big deal if you understand how to remove the flash without the use of burrs. Never put a rotary diamond or carbide on this tooth, ever. You have to remember these teeth are fairly soft. They're brittle, but they're fairly soft and they'll make little marks uh, with the burrs. So use a blade like a 12 scalpel and just use a tip. Don't use the whole side of it. Just use the tip and angle the, the blade at uh, probably 30 or 45 degrees towards the tooth so that you're not scraping up along it, but you're actually turning the instrument into, right like this. You see, I'm turning the instrument into the tooth as I remove the flash. You could use a finishing strip if you like, whatever it takes to remove the flash and approximately, and now we're ready to go with polishing and contouring at the same time because we have flash. So these are the die comp uh, set, the die comp instruments. The step one is a green and the step two is a gray. Each one of these has a two-step uh, process. Probably want to use these with water. I'm not going to show you how to use them dry today, but a little bit of water is going to decrease the heat. 
And then these are the feather lights by Brassler. And, and these are the final touch to give you an incredible high luster when you're finished with the contouring. If for some reason you happen to have a lot of excess composite uh, in this area and you need to do some contouring, you can use the OptiDisc by Kerr on this little mandrel. It's a latch type mandrel and you go from the left to the right. They have a couple different sizes uh, available, 12 millimeters, 9 millimeters approximately. And they go from dark to light. And I don't think you're going to need to use uh, these, uh, all of these on this particular composite. You can just use the last two because you just need a little minimal amount of contouring to the, the restoration. You can see here that I've got the grit facing towards the handpiece and I'm just using it to kind of flip over, flipping like that, which will create a nice little embrasure on the lingual side. Now I have the grit facing out and I'm doing the same thing, once again flipping the instrument and going out this direction. If you can, uh, add a little water to decrease the heat and remove some of the composite dust as you're progressing through this procedure. So now that we've got the basic shape to the marginal ridge, let's focus on removing flash and putting a high luster. This is the diacomp point, and this is a two-step process, first with the green and then with the gray. I like to use all the greens first and then go back over with the grays. So notice how the cup adapts so well to the natural fossa and just replicate that same morphology on your, on your composite tooth. And even if this uh, ends up hitting some of the tooth structure, it's not going to leave uh, an, a nasty mark that could potentially cause you to lose points. Once again, never use an egg-shaped diamond, an egg-shaped carbide ever on this particular restoration. And this is the diacomp disc. Works similar to the cup, it's just a little faster. Now we don't want to flatten out the marginal ridge. When you're using this, make sure you keep it away from the height of the contour of the marginal ridge. It's nice to have one of these blades because they can remove flash that happen to wrap around on the facial. Then finally, we're going to use the, uh, the feather lights. First the green and then the gray. And this entire procedure takes no more than about uh, 30 minutes and you can end up having a pretty good result when you're finished. And here we have the final result. Uh, like I said, it didn't take very long to accomplish, and I think that this would uh, keep uh, your examiners pretty happy. You can look at this from the facial and make sure that you don't have any flash in that area. You will see just a little bit of the composite, and uh, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, two-part video series on the Class 3 composite, Querimos Magisterium. Take care.